This is the last in a series of five. The first of the series talked about our wonderful, godly government and constitution. The next three talked about the Congress, the President, and the Supreme Court, and how all three of those entities have worked to destroy the freedoms in this country and to destroy our, our prosperity as well. This last one deals with money. Money is a critical issue. Without sound money, money that preserves value, money that can be used in trade, all people can do is trade items, barter. You can trade a couple of eggs for a pound of meat, whatever have you. You can't get very high in civilization in that fashion because you can't have people who could diversify and do specialized work. Uh, and create new, new ideas and create new things from plows to computers. It's impossible in, in, a, in, a, in a situation where people are trading eggs and meat for whatever they want to need. Maynard Keynes was a vicious Marxist who lived in the early part of the 1900s and his work became quite popular. Let me make a quote from him. Quotes, Lenin was certainly right there is no subtler, no surer way of overturning the existing basis of society than to devalue the currency. The process engages all the hidden forces of economic law on the side of destruction and does it in a manner which not one man in a million is able to diagnose. This, here's a man who was set out to deliberately destroy this nation and has done a wonderful job. It was not too long ago when President Nixon at the time said, we're all Keynesians now, and at least the leaders are. Now, m money is part of the basis of freedom, both political, spiritual, and financial. And a decrease in the value of the money decreases all three. The government was established to provide a basis for sound money. That's a biblical principle. Sound money, sound weight, sound measures. Very early, in the year 1792, the Coinage Act was produced. If the Coinage Act said anyone who attempted to debase the money would suffer death as a penalty. One of the reasons that the, uh, at least the Eastern Roman Empire, what they call derisively now the Byzantine Empire survived for so long is because for a long time anyone who would debase the currency would have his hand cut off. And that was a great uh, discouragement to people who would want to do so. We're ignoring that law now and the government itself is debasing the currency. The destruction of our money started early. Initially our money was simply silver and gold. It was defined by weight and purity and that was it. Paper money was all right, but it was simply a receipt for gold and silver. The first national bank was the first attempt to destroy our money, and that was something to do with Alexander Hamilton. A great hero who isn't given credit had a duel with Hamilton. His name was Aaron Burr, and he killed Hamilton in the duel. I don't know how much quicker our, we would have lost our freedoms if Hamilton had, left, had lived any longer because he was a great advocate for the first national bank. That's the equivalent of our present Federal Reserve, by the way. That first national bank was chartered, caused so much trouble, so much inflation, so much destruction in the economy that the charter was finally ended in 1811. Then the Congress chartered, chartered the second national bank in 1816 understand that politicians want to have a national bank as an unlimited source of money. Andrew Jackson basically based his whole career 
on eliminating that second national bank, and he succeeded. He said, they're gonna kill me or I'm gonna kill them. And in the end, he said, I killed them, and he was right. Understand the viciousness of these bankers and the politicians who support them. You've heard of the defense by insanity, someone murders somebody, they say he's innocent by virtue of insanity. The first time that came up, it was invented when the man who tried to assassinate uh, President Jackson failed in the process because it was a rainy day and his black powder pistols misfired. He bragged to the policeman who arrested him that he would never see prison. The, in fact, he said the bankers who hired him to kill Andrew Jackson promised him he'd never see prison, and he never did. He went to trial. He was found innocent based on the plea of insanity, the first time that ever happened. Now, if you ask me, a person who's insane and goes around killing people is a more dangerous than a person who's sane and goes around killing people. Nonetheless, the idea stuck. That shows you the power of the bankers and the politicians in, com in combination, even in those early days. The Civil War was another time when the money was devalued and great destruction was the result. Uh, in 1878, after the Civil War was over, Congress promised to redeem greenbacks again for gold and silver. And for a period of time, from 1878 to 1913, we had real money. No inflation, probably the greatest period of growth and prosperity in the history of the country. Real money is the foundation of freedom and prosperity. It gives control of the finances and the economy to individuals, not the government not bankers. Roosevelt confiscated the gold uh, in uh, a few years later. He took the gold from individuals who owned it and he paid them $20 an ounce and quickly raised the price to $35 per ounce once he had received all the gold he thought he could get. That was an enormous devaluation of the money at the, at the point. That was done because the Federal Reserve was creating phony money and there wasn't enough gold to back the money at the price where it had been fixed for so many years. In 1964, President Nixon stopped the coinage of silver money and in 1971, he stopped the ability of foreign governments to trade money for gold from the American Treasury. From, the, from 1971 on, the value of our money has been reduced by 80%. From the time that the Federal Reserve was created, it's been reduced by 98%. Most of it has happened since gold and silver were eliminated as breaks to inflation. That was the constitutional way to prevent inflation and to protect the liberty of Americans. I hope you've understood more about the, the purpose of real money and who and what was responsible for its destruction. I hope you found this useful.